this is Grace and today I'm going to walk you through how I made this cookie to commemorate Martin Luther King Jr. Day and an homage to the speech that he gave uh, in 1963 at the Lincoln Memorial. So this is an image from the speech that he gave and I'm projecting it with my projector and the first thing that I did was I used my scribe just to etch out some of the bigger shapes that I will later use as a guide to actually pipe the icing and I am now outlining the figure of Martin Luther King Jr. because later I will be flooding it now I prefer to only use a projector as much as I have to so I made some select choices about certain elements of the image that I needed to mark out in various ways before I will turn off the projector and then work from there without the projector on. So I'm outlining the figure here. I did the kind of etchings with the scribe for the trees um, and kind of the outline of where the people are. And after I outline the figure, I will also do the reflection pool and the Washington Monument. So something that you'll see in a second. I made a mistake, <laughs> so I left that in. You can see my, my big boo-boo stick. It's one of my favorite tools that I have really good at fixing your mistakes. So it, it's kind of hard to see, but the spot right now, I am just outlining his face and his neck, which I'm actually going to double outline in a second after I finish outlining the rest of his face. And the reason I'm going to double outline it is because when I flood the figure, I want there to be definition where his chin and his neck are so that you can see better that it is a, it is a person. Um, otherwise, if I didn't do that, it's, it's much more of just a, a blob in that area as you can see because of the particular angle that he's at um, his arm kind of intersects with the bottom half of his face and I just wanted it to be a little bit more distinct so here I am when I say double outline I'm just putting another outline on top of the one that I did already and I'm only doing that for the bit of his face that is kind of inside the blob if that makes sense it will probably make more sense when I flood it later but here I am outlining the reflection pool this is all a soft peak piping consistency I used three different consistencies when making this cookie a soft peak piping I also used a medium peak which is stiffer than a soft peak and the medium peak is what I used for the trees because I wanted there to be a bit more texture and definition for the trees and then of course I have a flood and it's kind of a thick flood and that's what I use for the figure and the reflection pool this tiny little Washington monument here I'm using the soft peak to outline and then I will actually use the soft peak to also fill in the Washington Monument. It's such a tiny little space. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to crater. And I'm also okay with it having a bit of texture, which you'll see in a second. So first I try to just kind of smooth it out and then I realize it's not smoothing out all that well. <laughs> so I take advantage of that in a moment. As you know, you know, the Washington Monument is made out of, actually, I don't know. Is it, is made out of stone? Someone correct me in the comments, please. <laughs> what is it made out of? Um, so I try to smooth it out and then I go through, I do something I've never done before and, and I'm um, using my scribe horizontal flush with the cookie to kind of press in what I think are going to look like kind of like stone marks and then I realize eh, it's not really doing that so I'm gonna go through again and I'm just kind of like 
doing the same motion but connecting them, which actually is kind of cool because it ended up creating this kind of peak for the Washington Monument. So it almost looks like the corner, which I know it's not actually the corner at that point, but I think it looks cool. I'm happy with it. So here we are. And you can kind of see before I start covering them up where I etched out with my scribe the shape of where I want the trees to be. And this is the medium peak. This gives me some decent texture, which is what I'm going for. I'm just applying even pressure and just kind of squiggling around the tip of my bag. No, no real rhyme or reason. And then I realized that I forgot to make one more mark to kind of mark out there's trees and there's a row of people in between the pool and the trees. So just wanted to make sure I didn't miss that. And I very intentionally left space between the figure and the things around it. I didn't want to connect, for example, the trees that you're seeing here, the people that I will pipe um, and then you'll see later the reflection pool. I wanted it to kind of have space around him, if that makes sense. <laughs> Just to kind of differentiate the figure a bit more. Just going in and adding. I thought it looked a little too even. So adding more. This is flood consistency. And I'm doing that because I just wanted it to have a very faint look to it. I wanted it to be a really, really thin layer of icing. So I'm going in here with my brush and just painting it out so it's an even layer. In a second, I believe I realize I have too much icing on the end of my brush, so I clean that off. Just making that a nice flat surface. I'll realize later that <laughs> against everything else, it just needed to be a little bit darker. So I'll add another layer um, after I've piped everything else. But I will say, so I only made one of these cookies. I kind of went for it. I actually baked three different ones. So I could have made three, but when I got to it, I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it. So if I made this again, there's certainly changes I would make, but I kind of like the fact that I just winged it. And I mean, I didn't wing it. I had an idea, I had a plan in mind, um, but it always kind of executes differently than, than you have it in your mind. So the people I'm piping with the soft peak piping consistency, and I would say that my soft peak was a little, a little stiff for soft. <laughs> um, and I just know that because the dots I'm piping actually left a bit of a peak which I was hoping they wouldn't, and you know me, I'm not the kind of decorator to go through and settle all those individual peaks. I also realize after the fact that I kind of piped these people in these two areas a bit too tight, because as I'm <clears throat> piping the rest of the area, um, I did it more spread out. Although, you know, now that I think about it, Maybe that kind of makes sense because they're farther away and so it should look a bit denser. I don't know. <laughs> no real science here, people. No real science. But yeah, if I did this again, I would do this consistency a bit thinner just so there isn't quite so much of a peak. So it takes me about five more minutes in real time to pipe all these dots. So I'm gonna do you a favor here. I don't normally do this, but I'm just speeding this up. Oh, hey, until we get to the end. This whole cookie took me 17 minutes of active decorating. So just chew on that one for a minute. I definitely started to get hand crampy by the end of these dots and needed a bit of a break before I got to the end. And I did this all in one sitting. Um, so I actually, I intentionally left flooding the figure for last because I wanted to be able to get this into the dehydrator ASAP. 
because I wanted to prevent against craters. And the second, that's funny, the second that I started flooding this, I regretted not doing any sort of squiggles or anything in his hand or any part of his arm because these were just asking for craters. <laughs> um, and I, I was kicking myself because as I said, also, I only made one of these cookies. Um, but here we are. It actually ended up pretty well because I flooded this pretty quickly. Um, and you can see what I was talking about. So that's bottom half of his face and his neck. And I'm just flooding up against the outline. So I don't want to flood over the outline because then that just defeats the purpose of creating that double outline in the first place. I want to flood next to it so that that like it's like a moat kind of the double outline. It holds the icing in and it will maintain that definition there, which I wanted just so you could see um, a little bit more that it's a person. I mean, in case you can't tell anyway. Um, and if you're wondering about the cookie itself, I honestly just took a blob of dough and just rolled it out. Um, I wanted something a bit more like messy, jagged, not perfect. If I had to guess, this cookie is somewhere in the region of five to six inches would be my guess. Five to, five to six inches wide. It's a, it's pretty decently big, but it's not like ginormous by any means. And since this is a thick flood, I did definitely need to use the scribe here to settle it out. And then, like I said, I realized that mm, I could use a little bit more on that pool because it just seemed a little too faint compared to the rest of the textures. Um, speaking of texture, I chose to do one color here because I just wanted to focus on texture. Um, and honestly, that is because <laughs> realistic things like this are not my strength. Um, I'm not I'm not a painter. Um, a lot of people love doing realism and I just it's just not my strength. So I chose to interpret this image with skills that I'm confident doing and I'm a big fan of texture. Um, I didn't want to have to worry about <laughs> different colors. So I just did one color. Um, sure, I could have added a bit more dimension by using some different colors, but... I like, I like the one color. And there we have it. That is my homage to Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech at the Lincoln Memorial in 1963. Hope you enjoyed watching this and that you learned a thing or two. <laughs>